This is your no nonsense guide to Google AI Studio. If you want to access any of the Gemini models, it's a lot better to use it through Google AI Studio. And I've spoken to a lot of people where they felt that the UI is bloated and it's very hard for them to figure out what to use what for. This tutorial where you will learn everything about Google AI Studio and then you can run one of the cutting edge state of the art models without having to compromise on the quality or customization. The very first thing that you will see once you sign into Google AI Studio is you would see something like this. You can just go here and then say, write a joke about Elon Musk and then send it. So the one thing that you have to keep in mind is you have to select the model, the right model that you want for this particular use case. So in this case, the right model could be a model that is simple, fast and easy to use because you don't just to hear a joke, you don't want something as good as Gemini 1.5 Pro, which will also take a lot of time. So this is a use case where you can optimize latency. So you can go here to the model section and then see, okay, what are the models available? You've got Gemini 2.0 Flash, Gemini 2.0 Flash Lite. I mean, Google, you have to get your model naming right because this is so confusing. You've got the light model, you've got the preview model, you've got the thinking model, you've got the experimental model, and then you have a separate section for a preview model, and then you have a separate section for Gemma model. You can select whatever model that you want. I'm gonna just go ahead and then select Gemini 2.0 flash, and then see how the uh, difference in speed is. Uh, same prompt, right? A joke about Elon Musk. For the same prompt, you can see how fast it does. So this is extremely fast, one of the fastest models that are available. Once you select the model, then you can see how much a token count is available for you for the selected model. So this is the context window. It's like the short term memory of the model that you select. So if I select 2.0 flash, you can see I've got 1 million tokens. If I select something like, let's say, go ahead and then select Gemma 2, you can see that I've got 8,000 tokens and I can select something like 2.0 flash, which we have already done. So I'm going to go select Gemini 1.5 Pro, which comes with almost 2 million tokens. So you can play with different models for different use cases. The next thing that you have to do is you have to understand why you have temperature here. If you want to increase the creative response of the model, if you want to make the model responses a little more chaotic, then increase the temperature. If you want it to be more grounded to the truth, like if you are looking for objective truth, then keep the temperature low. This is basically the randomization of, you know, how the model samples the response back to you. Now, this is the most basic setup. Now, if you want to save this prompt, one big problem that you would face with Google AI Studio is when you go create a new prompt, whatever that you did, the history is not saved by default. That is something that they've designed by choice. So if you want something to be saved, you have to always go save it. So I'm going to go here and then ask a simple question and then we're going to come back and then save it. So I'm going to say, write a simple essay on why Google beat Alta Vista Vista. So I'm going to send this with a Gemini 2.0 flash run this and you can see the model specifications here, whatever model that you select. Once this is done at this point, you can see the title is available here. You can go ahead and then save it. So this is the prompt name that is optional. I mean, it is auto created. You can have an optional description and then save it. So once you save it, you would start seeing that appearing in your library so that you can use it all the time whenever you want. So this is one of the easiest way to retrieve whatever that you saved. The second interesting thing is there is a system instruction as well. So that is to customize what kind of role your model want, you want the model to play or what kind of guardrails that you want to set. For example, you can say you are talking to a really, really old um, grandmother, grandmother, or I should have said old lady. So keep that in mind whenever you answer. So you can have a system prompt like this and then you can ask something like, can I do a skydive? Let's send it. Oh, oh my dear, skydiving, well now that's a thought. So it takes that persona and then gives you the answer back. So this is the most basic version of what you can do with Google AI Studio. But you did not click this video to watch this. 
Now is the main important part of what other things that you can do with Google AI Studio. The first most important thing is the tool section. So you've got structured output. Structured output is one of the consistent ways of getting a JSON response back from a large language model. It is extremely helpful if you're doing something like function calling or trying to build a software on top of it. So I can go here and then say, write a joke on Elon Musk uh, with some numbers in it. And once you send it, I've enabled the structured output. You can see that it gives me back a JSON object where the key is joke and then the value is actually the joke in itself. The next one is code execution. Code execution means that whatever that you create here, it will automatically get executed and then you would be able to see something. For example, I'm going to say, okay, I want to know uh, the uh, 65th number in the Fibonacci series and enable the code execution. That means it will write a code for this, execute it and give you the output back. So it wrote a code, executed it and gave you the output back. So this is code execution, quite helpful if you want to solve a problem, but using Python. So the next one is you have got function calling as well, which is again, if you want to have like the agentic code and all these things, function calling is quite helpful for you. Now, one feature that you would not see on any other chat tool, like let's say Google AI Studio or a developer tool is something that Google calls as grounding with Google search. This is one of the most underrated Google AI Studio feature because not a lot of people know it. So what this does is it takes whatever that you're asking, it tries to fact check with Google search, which if you believe to be one of the current um, state of the internet or the world, then you are basically trying to validate uh, against whatever is currently the best source of news available on the internet. So for example, I can go here and then say, um, when is going, when is the freestyle chess going to happen? But if I just send this, it will not have any clues. So for example, I can send this and it doesn't have a, any idea about what is a freestyle chase, what are we talking about and all these things. So I'm going to go ahead and then ask the same question, but create a new prompt, ask the question, but this time I want to ground it with Google search. So you can see that it is going to use Google search and now run it. So technically you can see that the freestyle chess land grand slam tour is already underway. Here's a four breakdown of what is happening. And uh, I think the first one started today, I guess the first leg of the tour is taking place in Weissenhaus, Germany and like literally happened today. So this is exactly one of the biggest advantages of using Google AI studio with grounding with Google search. Now this is again, what all the things that you can do in tool section. The next one is the advanced settings where you can have the safety settings. You can have a stop sequence. Like for example, if there is one token, when you get the token, you want the model to stop, then you can stop it. You can define the output length. Even though your model has got 1 million token, you're not going to let the model output 1 million tokens. So you can have a output length and safety setting is of course, like you can select harassment, hate and the other settings. How much is the lever that you want to control? Now, after you do all these things, let's say you are a developer, you want to build a code. Now, how do you do it? Like, let's just say in this particular case, I want to upload an image. I want to ask it to write a YouTube description from that image. So I'm going to go here and click upload and I'm going to say upload file. And I'm going to just upload one of my latest thumbnails, which in this case is deep llama. Okay. So I've uploaded this and I've, uh, I'm going to say, um, please uh, give me, um, give me a detailed YouTube description based on this and I'm going to run this. So I've uploaded an image and I've given a prompt. It is going to give me a response back. So as you can see here, it gave me a response back. Now, if I want to implement this as part of my application, like whether it could be a desktop application, a web application or an Android application, then you can go here and then click this get code. And then that would ideally get you the entire code with which you can run. So all you have to do is you have to go click get API key. So that will get the API key for you. So if you click create API key, it will create the API key for you. For now, anything that you use through Google AI studio, you can prototype for free. 
and then you can just click get code and you have got the code in fact if you want to play with the code all you have to do is click in one button and then it will directly take you to google collab where you don't have to do anything with um, you know massive setup and all those things because it's the same company so this is one of the easiest ways from prompt you can go to code in a very short like single click of a button now once this is all done you also have an ability to compare two models this is what we do in arena so you can select 2.0 flash here i can select 2.0 flash light here and i can say which one is bigger um, 9 um, let's say 8.11 or 8.9.8 so i'm just like two random numbers and it says 8 is bigger than 8.11 I don't know. I don't even know why it says eight is bigger. Um, it's, it's it's yeah. It's it's quite absurd because I I didn't I didn't give any eight there. So maybe it says one point eight. I don't know some some weird stuff. Anyways, you can compare it with two different models. So side by side. So for whatever use case you are prototyping, like recently I've been trying to build like a doctor use case. So for me, it's very important for me to understand how the model is visually looking at certain things. So I can select two different models, like for example, Gemini 1.5 flash and Gemini 2.0 flash and upload an image, like in this case, um, uh, upload file and um, say, um, can you suggest some face uh, facials for the person in this photo okay and i can have settings and i can add any settings i want like in this case i want like a structured output um, and run this so if you see this i don't know if i've uh, enabled structured output okay it says i'm not able to edit images because there's a picture of a human face there but still it gives you like some bland suggestions so this is the compare feature so at this point we have done everything that is basic so basically build a prompt tools advanced settings now let's say you want to give something what we call as a few short example you want to give multiple examples and then based on that you want the model to learn this is something that is hidden inside google ai studio not a lot of people know it tune a model and then you can see you can go select this data source what you want to do here uh, for example you can select an example news highlights so you know how you can prepare a data set in such a way that this input should be this output should be this once you give this basically you are telling google ai studio that this is how i want the input prompt to be output prompt to be use these examples and give me a final response back it's very effective not a lot of people do it again like people hardly know it you you want you have like any downstream nlp task you can use this you want to create tweets for your company you can use this you want to use it for customer support you can use it for all these use cases where you want standardization model steerability you can definitely use this that is tune the model the next one is they've got a prompt a gallery so you can go see here what all the things that they can do like they have already created the prompt given it to you for example if you want like video q a there is a prompt library for you you can upload a video what is the question that you want to ask so you also get to know what kind of questions that you ask and finally the most important one that i would say these days is uh, the stream uh, real time this means you can talk to gemini you can show gemini like your face and three you can share your screen with gemini so i'm going to talk to gemini and uh, hey can you hear me okay i have to give the permission it's a bit inconsistent can you hear me yes i can hear you is there anything specific that is inconsistent? I'm sorry, I was just bitching about to you, my audience. Okay, no problem. Do you want to share more about your audience? Um, no, I just want to know why is it always confusing with Google about names of AI models? It can be confusing. The naming conventions for AI models are not always consistent, and Google, like other tech companies, may use different naming schemes. Are you having a specific issue with a particular name? Uh, no worries. Uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye. So as you can see here, this is an excellent feature. I've got a dedicated video about it. But all in all, this is exactly what you're supposed to do with Google AI Studio. Stop using the Gemini interface. I mean, you don't know what the model is. You cannot control a lot of things. If you know bare minimum about how to use computer, I would strongly encourage you to use this. And this tutorial basically covers like the 90% of what you can do with Google AI Studio. 
Let me know if you have got any thoughts, anything that I've missed and anything if you have learned new. Otherwise, all these things that I showed, showed you right now is available for free, including the API key for a certain amount of requests without, um, you know, without having to pay or even put credit card. So this is like an excellent playground um, experimental API for you to use before going to production. Let me know what you feel about this. See you on the video. Happy prompting.